So if this okay for you, I suggest to start. Uh, if uh, there is something technically that should not work, I invite you to use the chat function uh, to share this uh, with me, okay? Um, so the focus for me was uh, sharing my learnings on leadership. And what I did, I tried to find five elements that were revealing for me. So uh, personally, professionally, I'm uh, since a long time busy with uh, topics as leadership and coaching and team coaching. And uh, I was happy to be invited by Tika to share my findings together with you. So I'll try to, to have a condensed 20 minutes together with you. Uh, if you have any questions, I invite you to use the chat function. And if you have some time, we will share some uh, thoughts in the breakout room. And like uh, Steffi said, I'm always ready to share personally some elements with you afterwards. My first learning uh, was the session of Keith Ferrazzi. So at the bottom of the slides, I've always mentioned some sources. For those who like to go a little bit further, you will find the authors or the people who were in the sessions at ATD. When you see SOMI, social media, you can find also these people in YouTube, uh, in TED Talks, etc., etc. So um, this will be found on every key slide for every findings. The first element was a session of Keith Ferrazzi on co-elevation as a leadership challenge. So you will also find some quotes uh, that can be useful. These are quotes that are used a lot of times at the ATD uh, uh, conference. I've been there for the last 15 years. So one of the quotes I kept in mind was, let's never go back to work, let's go forward. Just to mention uh, the importance of uh, looking forward and looking uh, to the future. Um, the co-elevation, going higher together, the idea behind it, it's um, related to leading without authority. And the idea that Keith Ferrazzi was sharing with us, that okay, you can become uh, better and better within a team, but let's focus on the co. Let's uh, use all the energy within the teams instead of being responsible as a leader or feeling responsible as a leader to, to start the process at your own. So he's discovered four elements uh, that also were uh, tested in reality, of course. The first one is starts with a vision on leadership competencies. The second one is, as a leader, please always try to feel how is your team there to ask it regularly, not only in times that we have been facing last months, but also in regular times. How's your team? How are your people doing is a key element. A third one, and this was um, a concept the first time I heard about, it was collaborative problem solving. So the tendency within teams is that everybody tries to solve problems more individually. So he used the abbreviation CPS, collaborative problem solving. And uh, to, to get to that moment, he said, okay, uh, psychological safety is a precondition. How to do it as a leader? He used three words, serve, share, and care. Also, a quote he used was, be the leader of people, not the leader with a badge. And he gave a practical hint when you have one-to-one -one meetings and also team meetings, start your meetings with a quick, he called it sweet and sour, before starting a meeting to show vulnerability. Sweet and sour, he meant... Okay, what happened, for instance, last week, that you made me very, you made you very happy. On the other hand, what happened that, uh, okay, that stressed you, for instance. So this was an easy takeaway I took to share uh, with you uh, because it's easy to apply. Uh, the fourth and last step is um, the development process. He, he focused a lot on co-creation, a co-development process. Um, his sources he mentioned was total quality management. This is not new for us, of course. But he said you can help each other to share the development process of the whole team. And for the people who are uh, HR professionals and CHROs, he said it's absolutely a movement for CHROs to play a key role in a process like this one. A uh, last element he shared, Keith Ferrazzi, an interesting guy, is um, to stress on open 360 feedback in a team, uh, to unleash peer-to-peer -peer feedback by positive strokes and also by constructive feedback. And I loved the sentence he used. Instead of uh, talking about development points, he said, my suggestion for going forward because I care about your success, he used. So this can be a sentence to uh, hopefully share constructive feedback within teams. So this was the first element I like to share the first uh, learning. If you have any questions, uh, we can come back 
the last 10 uh, minutes. The second learning was about the end-to-end -end, uh, leadership and developing your leadership from start to finish. Why was it interesting? Because we are living in a world where a lot of people are, will be retiring, let's say, the next five or ten years. We all know that. So what happens a lot in leadership development in a lot of companies is that the focus is uh, put it on the young starting leaders, the leaders with a lot of potential in number of years, and the group who's at the end of their career, sometimes they're a little bit forgotten. So Lisa Downs, who's the chapter lead of ATD, uh, she shared a model with us to combine the experience of the senior leaders with the expectations of the junior leaders. So how did she mention that? And this is a process that has been applied in some companies and can be interesting when you have uh, ideas in that direction. So the, she said, okay, try to combine uh, the energy of the senior leaders who are, let's say, five years in the company uh, before retiring, combine them with the high potentials. Personally, I like to talk about all potential instead of high potential, uh, because there's potential to be found in everyone. Um, this, the people who are one or two years before their retirement, she suggested to, to combine them with, the, let's say, the managers or the small and, uh, small and medium enterprise managers um, in the professional world. And the people who left the company, who, ex who did an exit, uh, he, she suggested to give them a larger role. And roles, uh, descri description of roles you can find at the bottom of the slide. Now, how uh, does she start up uh, an exercise like this? She's right here, there are some possible activities. As I said, uh, and also as Steffi said, you will get all the slides, and so this can be interesting to see if there are some opportunities within your company. So you find a lot of roles that could be given in the combination between, for instance, senior leader and the high potentials, et cetera, et cetera. So this can be inspiring to open up a discussion because it's a pity, a lot of studies show that were also shown during the sessions. Um, we tend to forget to share the builded up experiences of the senior people before they are leaving the company. And that's the reason why it can be interesting. Also to inspire you, you will find some questions that can be asked uh, related to the younger and the new or younger or newer leaders. And on the other hand, the senior leaders. This can be, let's say, open ended questions that can be useful to open up an internal constructive discussion uh, to put steps forward in that direction. This was my second learning. Uh, my third learning was about uh, manage your 72 for yourself and your team. So it was a session by Gary Zick, uh, buildakickasscompany.com is his uh, website and also present on social media. So what's his point? And it, uh, it was interesting to see it in, in that way. Um, the, he said, yeah, we have to, to think about culture and climate. Eh? And the goal is uh, a lot of studies like uh, Marcus Buckingham or the Gallup Institute shows it in a study. About 85% of people in a certain way is waiting till the weekend is coming. And only 15% are really uh, engaged and connected to, to their company. So the 72, the relation, uh, what does he mean by the 72? Well, his point is rather easy at the first glance. We have 168 hours in a week. We sleep about... 56 hours on average and we have about 40 working hours also on average of course so the other 72 hours are is left to have our personal life and instead of focusing on managing the 40 he focuses on 72 because the 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 border between professional time and private time is becoming vaguer and vaguer we have probably felt it ourselves the last months so he says it's very very important to keep in mind the 72 hours and in that way, in that point of view, also focusing on the quality of the job in the 40 hours because the link is so close. So what makes the life, life he says, yeah, the combination of relationship and experiences. So it's really focusing on the human approach. So what I learned in a lot of sessions at the virtual ATD is that please do not come back to business as usual. Keep in mind the things that have been perceived as positive within companies to keep it in the longer run in a more let's say, um, yeah, strategic approach in, in, in working with people in, in professional contexts.
And this is a point that he mentioned. The figures you find on the slide, and if it's uh, behind the pictures, you can move it, as you know, when you use Zoom. And so some quotes also are indicated, and uh, this can be inspiring to have a discussion. So um, a last topic also related to the session of uh, Gary was this one, uh, the culture versus climate. So I see in a lot of companies, both words are used as a kind of synonym, but there is no synonym. Eh? So to change the culture, we must focus on the climate. The climate is, let's say, for every individual more micro than macro. And this is, these are the elements that are more easy to observe. Culture is more, let's say, the topic used to talk about values, beliefs. Eh? It's important. But to change the culture, eh, we must focus on the climate because this is what people really feel and live in their day-to-day -day, uh, cooperation. So this was my third learning. Uh, so there's a lot of input, but again, if you like to have more information, uh, please don't hesitate to, to give a shout and to call us, etc. Okay. Well, the fourth learning is uh, a self-reflection on how to avoid to be an Aetna leader. So an Aetna leader, uh, it was a session of uh, Dan Pontefract, a Canadian uh, guy, all talk, no action. I love the abbreviation um, because uh, he was focusing on, on valuable lessons also based upon about 30 years of uh, professional uh, guidance of uh, people within professional context. He also wrote a book, Lead, Care, Win, How to Become a Leader Who Matters. And the nine valuable less lessons, I loved it because he, he had a lot of examples from sports world also. He had um, a lot of examples he had being a coach or a team coach within organizations. So what I'm going to show you is the nine lessons in a visual that he used in his session. And there will be a second slide with some ideas that can be useful to start up uh, the ideas and to make it live. Let me show the first slide is this one. And so it started with number one, be relatable, uh, play for meaning, stay present, remain curious, embrace change, dare to share, command clarity, uh, commit to balance and champion others. So the title of my session was, is this timeless or is this new? For me, this is in a certain way timeless, but it's very good to remind us of all these elements. Um, when you look back at the best boss you ever had, probably you will recognize some of these lessons. Now, uh, just to make it complete, I will not read it uh, totally together with you, but uh, you see some elements related to all these nine lessons. Eh? What are the questions that could be useful? Uh, what are the elements that could be applied in reality? Some are more obvious and uh, some are maybe less obvious. For, uh, I, let me take, for instance, number seven, uh, command clarity. There is a big, big need of clarity in distant times. You have probably felt that. One of the elements of okay, to be transparent, we know that this has a lot of added value. Being decisive is also well appreciated. But for instance, he said also, let's not forget the load management, the workload management. Because being on a distance, your perception could be completely different than the perception of people working at home, for instance. So talk about it, ask questions about it, etc., etc. All right. So um, let me go to the fifth uh, learning. Listen, capture all you can, and uh, let's focus on coaching as a leadership challenge. And I have a little question for you, and you can ask this uh, by using the chat function, okay? I will show you a little statement, a little question, and my asking to you is to, to tell me what's your preferred answer to this one. Imagine you have a friend, and that friend says to you, well, you know what? Next year, uh, we are heading to South Africa. Let's hope that this will be possible. Now, be honest, what will be your answer? Imagine a friend is saying this to you. Will it be A, oh, South Africa is fantastic. We've been there. I have plenty of tips for you. Or B, South Africa is fantastic. It's on my bucket list. Or C, tell me more. Or D, are you sure you're able to book now? Or E, I've been to more beautiful destinations ready to share with you. So what's your, what's your preferred answer? Let me have a look. I see some people answering C. Let's wait a few minutes. 
Thank you, Vicky, Marian, Kevin, Frank, A. Should do C, but honestly, probably A. Thank you, Liz Lot. <laughs> okay, wait for a few more. <laughs> Agree with Liz Lot. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Well, um, it's interesting because it, re it uh, refers uh, to a session that I had together uh, with um, a lady called Susan Scott. I indicated her name on the former slide of Fierce Conversations. It was, for me, a very impressive session. And her uh, conviction is absolutely to focus on number C, like you mentioned. Thanks for that. Some people choose this um, as, as a first option. And um, the studies show that about 80% 80, 80 of the people uh, tend to have an answer like A, B, D, or E. So only 20% naturally goes to number C. Why do I focus on this element? Well, if there is one tendency I uh, faced um, through all the sessions I've been following, is the importance of the, let's say, capturing and listening aspect of leadership role. Let's be honest, then, when we talk about uh, people who are very communicative, we think about people who are very convincing and eh, who can convince other people about their ideas, etc. It's rather seldom that we call a good listener a good communicator. On the other hand, rationally, we all know it's 50% of the story, the good listening. So in the future, it will be more and more important to, yeah, to capture all the elements of our, of our environment, also without teams, to be perceived as a good leader. And this, is, this was her point. It's a lady of 76 years old, and she has had a very uh, interesting energy. There will be found, you will find some uh, videos on uh, YouTube if this is interesting. Now, what this should suggest, she shared an approach to learn and to have an evolution in the quality of listening. And it's a seven steps approach. I will go quickly now, but as I said, you will get the slides. And it, it is easy to apply. First question, I want you to think about um, something that's important for you. Eh? What's the most important thing you have on your plate? And please, she said, continue to ask questions, questions, questions. Never put your own statement. You even don't know about it. So why should you put your statement? Second question, what's going on since when? So it's focusing more in depth uh, to... The, the case that's mentioned by the person who is in front of you. Three, how this is impacting, affecting you or others. Uh, probe the emotions. So in fact, she says, it's good to talk about facts, but let's never forget also to talk about feelings. A lot of leaders have a way to go there. And what else do you feel? Tell me more. Um, and uh, when people say, she says, yeah, stop about all these questions, you can, ask, you can say, I ask these questions because I do not want to have the same meeting again with you. Right? So please give me the input so that we can put one step further. Fourth question, let's imagine plus six months from now, if nothing changes, what will happen? How will this affect you? What do you feel? And then she says, yeah, now people are totally depressed because they don't think naturally about six, six months later. Fifth question, what are your fingerprints? What, are your, what is your DNA on the issue? Eh, to avoid, for instance, finger pointing. And she always said, okay, ask questions. Tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Until this moment, no personal conviction or statement has been shared by her or by the one who asks the question. Six, eh, imagine everything's okay. What will happen? What else? What else? Look into the scenario. What do you feel? Eh? Seventh question, what's your next step? Pro, pro, pro. In other words, these seven steps, you may recognize some elements that, that are combined with the, the GROW uh, approach in coaching. You, you recognize that. Some of you will also know the Disney method as an approach. What I loved here was the simplicity. It's not that complex. I have already some companies who ask me to work for half a day with a group of 10 people on really practicing this approach. And she says, only then, after these seven steps, if you feel so, come up with a suggestion not earlier. Be there as the Sherpa, their friend. So this is important to keep in mind, to go on in asking more information before putting your own statement. So a few tips she added was hold it, keep asking what else. Tell me more, tell me more. And this leads to deep connection. 
a little trick eh, when you ask to somebody how are you doing everybody says okay or good if you ask the same question how are you doing you get more when you and don't make it a child game but when if you ask it three times well, how are you really doing well at that moment it happens that people start to share personal elements and this is interesting to always keep in mind okay then the second tip um, was about uh, when there is a resistance well hold people able I really, really want to know what's on your plate. And thank you, what else? It's, it's me, I really want to know it. So keep focusing on getting to know uh, the information, is what she says. No self-disclosure, it's not about you. And four, um, she also said, okay, anonymous feedback is horrible. So she's a big fan of open feedback, open 360 feedback even. Personally, I should add here, yeah, trust is a precondition, of course, before you can share some open feedback. All right. Well, this uh, was the learning. Some other quotes. It's time for humility. I heard it a lot of times in a lot of sessions. Um, I just care. I don't know about uh, what you're doing in, in your job when you talk to somebody and you do not know the job. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and she says also people who know everything, it's really boring. So these were the five learnings I like to share with you. So it was a quick overview. Um, there's a lot behind, of course. Uh, but if you have any questions, I invite you to unmute and to, like, to take the last five to ten minutes to share some uh, questions with you. Okay? I will open also the chat function, but feel free to share it uh, by unmuting yourself.